All right, guys, we got this. Let's go. Good white trips. Eat. Pros next. Go. On one. On one. Ready? Three. What's going on, everyone? Incap24 here from Huddle.gg. Today's video, we're going to do a uh, discussion type style where it's actually going to be a really long video. So I do suggest that if you guys want to listen to me in the background while you play a game, while you're driving, um, I just got background on here just from a game that uh, I played so that you wait, there's just something to look at, but it's really about just the discussion. And we're just going to discuss how Madden 24 um, basically played out and what improvements and changes we'd like to see in Madden 25. Now you're going to see that I'm going to do you know five different you know sections with a lot of different sub points, and I'm going to offer some solutions. But at the same time, some of the solutions I'm offering are not things that I want as a first type of solution. But I wanted to put some things out there. I want to hear what your thoughts are about them. If you guys have better solutions, I'd love to hear your thoughts and and put them in the comments. What would you change if you had the opportunity to change something? And if you know a solution of why and how. Please do so because you know I know there are eyes on this type of video that people like to see and if there's things that they're able to you know change or um, you know tweak a little bit you know going into 25 that's a great opportunity for you know some people to, to see some feedback of, of what people felt about Madden 24. So uh, without further ado let's jump right into it guys. So the first gameplay change that I want to talk about that I want to see go into Madden 25 has to do with the O-line, their ability to target, their ability to uh, basically pass protect, um, kind of what their logic is and some of the factors that I feel like that are causing it to be a little bit more difficult and maybe some of the solutions that we can hopefully see in order to make sure that um, you know, we have a little bit more of uh, tools to be able to do it a little bit quicker, I think is the biggest thing for me. So before I get into this, I want to talk about, I believe there's um, every blitz in this game is blockable. I feel like, you know, um, there are blitzes in the moment that you're seeing it the first time that you don't know how to block it. And, you know, if it's something that's rare and it's not something that's gone, you know, to the meta and, and people are using it over and over again. Yeah, those can be a little bit tougher. And, you know, for, for the most part, they're style blitzes and you can kind of learn how to, to block them or whatnot but when it comes to blitzes out there that you see on a daily basis that you know it's kind of got to the point where this is a really good blitz you know for those that lab it something like us you know a, a website that wants to make sure that everybody that you know um, supports us has that ability to do so we're going to lab it we're going to find the solution and we're going to be able to go the issue with that is that the, there's a few things that hold us back and make it for a very slow game and a lot of the pros will opt to not try to block it and basically quick hike it, flip their formations, we'll talk about that later, um, you know, send five out and try to quick pass it so that way they have the ability to um, try to catch you before you set, set the whole blitz up or just in general do a different style. Now, when it comes to blocking it, the reason why they don't want to do that a lot of times is because of the time it takes to do so. Right? There's a few things that, that are not in our favor that I would love for it to get fixed next year. One is the play clock runoff, right? It's really, really odd the way that it works, the way that if you pick your play too early, it gets a lot of you know the time um, you know basically run off. If you take it too late, then obviously you don't have enough time to do it. You have to kind of find that perfect spot to where you want to call your play to where you don't get the auto runoff. A lot of times if you just pick a play right away, you're, you're good to go um, because of the fact that it hasn't got to that point yet. Just in general, the, the play clock runoff is very, very frustrating, especially if you're somebody who doesn't only run one formation that you gotta toggle through formations because now you have to look at the play clock and understand when am I supposed to call this based upon how much time is left in order to have the most time to set something up. And then once you have the time to set up a blitz uh, protection, now you gotta go ahead and you have to deal with quarterback animations. And this is one of the things that is probably one of my biggest things that I hate, right? Um, one, quarterback animations in general, the more the, the more you do, the more you're going to get the quarterback animations, even if you have conductor, even if you have master technician, um, because if you're setting up your, your pass protection, you're, you're, you're setting up your, um, your, your routes in order to make sure that you also beat what they're sending to you, it does take time. And you're going to see that, you know, um, a lot of times the quarterback isn't smart enough to know that it's an expiring play clock. So even if you're trying to get that last play, he's going to go through his motions. I think that all needs to be can't like go ahead and if you want to do this in like you know offline mode great if you want to do it in in you know just that first 
canned animation just so that it kind of you know you show what it is and but you have like basically your ability to do your hot routes to me that's what's needed to start this process of allowing us to pick up the blitzes because if it's taken us twice as long as we have to wait for the next one we got to slide one way and id one way and double team one person and do it in a certain order and then you got to do you know your hot routes first so whatever the case is right uh, I, just, I don't want to get into all the, the, the details of it, but when you have to do certain things a certain way, every single play to stop the same blitz, yes, it's blockable, but at what cost, right? You can't have any like you know drives that 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 um, you know are able to be done in a two minute you know warning type situation because you're taking 30 seconds to, to set up your protection. You're doing all these different things, and you know it starts to go to the point where maybe I can't use certain formations because of this because. You know, I, if I need a quick hike it, I can only, I need to block one guy and go. There's a lot of different things that um, unfortunately do not allow for the current model to be in, in a way that helps you from an efficiency standpoint to set up your blocking every single time, unless you want to take that clock down to a very minimal spot every time. So that's the first thing I'd like to see changed when it comes to this, right? Let's get the, pl the play clock runoff better. Let's get the animations to get really thrown out of the game from a quarterback's position. Let's get to basically making sure that we can set this up, right? Second thing is, is the logic, right? I kind of talked about this already. It doesn't matter if you are, you know, if they change the logic, something else is going to open up. That's just the game of coding, right? If, if the logic goes ahead and says, I want this to be something that targets this player, um, you know, in this, in this, uh, alignment, then they're going to know that you they can go blitz from a different side because these guys are going to shade towards a slide this way, whatever the case is. What I propose, you know, is obviously we want it to be um, as you know good as possible. Let's pick up without it being psychic. If it's psychic, guys, and we know, and they they, they, go, they look at your blitzes and you say, you know what, at this point, they know where all the blitzes are going and they're going to pick it up perfectly as long as there's not, you know, a um, an un, uh, you know, unbalanced amount of people. Right? If you're blitzing seven against five, obviously people are going to come in because you just don't have enough, enough people to block it. But if you're trying to you know, get a blitz in with five people, um, even you know six on six, whatever the case may be, and they know where your angles are in every single play and the guys just pick it up, that wouldn't be a fun game. I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be something that would be um, very, very, you know, uh, it, it would deter you from wanting to blitz. So, any logic they put in the game is going to be something that can be countered. I just want to make sure you put that. What I want is the ability to have a little bit more at our, our uh, fingertips that's quick, okay? What I mean by this, you have the ability to slide left, you have the ability to slide right. We don't have the ability to pinch our, our players or fan them out. If I was to go against 4-3, even 6-1, I'd want my guys to basically protect inside out. So I'd want them to go ahead and pinch my, my line to where I'm going to make sure that my inside shoulders are protected, knowing that's where they're blitzing. And yes, that might mean that I might allow some outside heat, but that's my choice. I have that ability to do so, right? And, and vice versa, if I'm going against DB Fire 2 where they're blitzing basically you know, two outside players, maybe I want my tackles to fan out more. And I'm gonna say, you know what, I'm a little bit more susceptible to inside heat, but I've got my tackles to be able to do that. And I'm picking and choosing based upon what my players or uh, my opponent's doing, the style of the ability to block these. And that's the first thing I would like to see added to that. Yes, do I want better um, ability for our guys to, to to know, you know, if they're doing the same blitz, how to, you know, compensate for that and, and know that. I do, but at the same time, I don't. And, I, and the reason why I say that is part of the skill gap in the game is to be able to understand that you don't want the, the computer to do everything for you, right? If that's the case, then you know, you're playing a game in which you, know, you might as well, all this adaptive AI um, just says, you know what, you're struggling, let me help you out. And I just don't think that's what we play video games for, not a head to head, right? That's just not what I believe that this game should be. It's a game of skill, you should show it. Now, do I believe that, you know, if they give us the tools to make it easier? Yes. Can we get more time to set that up? Can we get our adjustments in quicker so that way we don't have to sit there and take the entire game clock to do it? Yes. That's where I'm starting when it comes to this. And obviously when I talk about this, they're all together, but that's the first gameplay change I want. I want the ability to be able to uh, control my in and outward of the, um, the attention of my uh, line on a quick 
you know, uh, universal uh, button press. And then also, you know, obviously I want to make sure that I have the ability to go ahead and ID and double team, all that type of stuff in conjunction with that in order to make sure that I just have a little more tools at my disposal. So the next thing I'd like to see addressed um, in Madden 25 gameplay is really to talk about the issue that we're having where the meta has come over the last couple of years, flipping your play or flipping from one formation to another formation and basically putting the defense at a huge disadvantage from um, a technical standpoint, right? This year there was a kind of a glitch where your um, players, you know, if you got them in a certain spot, they, they weren't able to be backed up once you did this, right? Um, an error that happened all year never really got fixed. You know, you're in a situation right now where the meta this year was really to make sure that you're in symmetrical formations like 4-3, even 6-1 and dollar and dime. Due to this fact, if you were a nickel, you are really at a bad uh, disadvantage because you know a lot of times it wouldn't allow you to flip your play with it um, in order to, to get your nickel corner to the strength of the field. You know, um, it was just one of those deals to where sometimes you know you're able to kind of reset. Sometimes it just wouldn't allow you to. And I feel like that was something that um, really took over the game. If you look at MCS, a lot of the last couple you know uh, years. That was that's been it. You know who can flip the play quick hike? Who can go from one formation to one formation quick hike? I think it takes away the X's and O's because what they're doing is really just taking advantage of uh, the offense is quicker than the defense. Simply put, right? I feel like that's something that um, you know we want to see the best players beat people by the execution and the X's and O's, not the um, how can I audible this and this, run an RPO, run a quick hitter, run something I don't have to adjust very quickly and see if my opponent can get quick enough to adjust it. And if they can quick enough to adjust that, I've got the next play that they can adjust to. And it doesn't, it's not that you don't know what they're running. It's that you literally are at disadvantage as far as the, um, the amount of inputs you could put in compared to what they need to do in that situation, right? Because you're always reactive as a defense. Now, obviously, there was ways around that with running symmetrical defenses, but I feel like that, that kind of waters down the game and makes it to where um, the game is just boring facing the same things over and over again. And, you know, um, people that are going to want to win, you know, from a competitive level or at all costs are going to take advantage of the shortcomings of the game. And then they're going to use the things that are going to help them, right? That's just the way we'll play the game. Um, if we were able to get a fix in this area, I think that will change the way that um, you see the same things over and over again, right? So what is the solution for this? That's the tough part, guys. I think that is, you know, there's some solutions out there. and I don't know if I like any of them, but I think that there are some solutions that you can do um, in order to kind of fix this. Um, without giving the opportunity of taking away the ability to flip the play and all that stuff. I think that's, you know, taking things away from the game is not where I feel like solutions should be, right? First one, you know, um, is basically slow down the uh, the flipping of the play, right? What does that mean? Either make them go a little bit slower when they cross the, you know, when they get to the, the their endpoints, or make the, the the wide receivers take a little bit longer to set, um, so that the defense has a little bit better opportunity to adjust to it. Kind of like um, you know, you have those uh, that ability out of the huddle to adjust your defense. You know, being able to go ahead and that's only if they flip from you know uh, across the line of scrimmage. If you go from something like a you know, let's just say a trips to the right, and then you go ahead and basically go to bunch to the right, and where that tight end is in that inside spot where they don't switch, then I feel like that's something that you don't have to have a a timer that goes in that that changes it. Right, just if a player goes from one side of the uh, the center to the other side of the center, maybe there's a built-in, you know, a little bit of a slowdown, right? Do I love this solution? Not really, not from a competitive standpoint, but it is something that could happen, kind of like what you look for, you know, a nano detection to say, hey, listen, you know, we, we, we noticed that this is a problem in the game and people are taking advantage of it. We got to do something to keep the defense at a um, less of a disadvantage in this situation because um, you know you're pressing 30 inputs to start the the play and then they flip it and you, you have to do another 30 inputs to do that you know it's it's just it's not feasible and that's what people are, are doing um, to kind of win and that's why um, people are basically you know going to the same defenses over and over and over again in order to kind of you know take that out so there is a solution already built in the game it just makes the game you know less of a variety if that makes sense. 
Now, the other th the type of solutions you can do is um, basically find a way to have a setting to where the defense flips with the um, offense. What I mean by that is, you know, if you set up a certain defense and they flip the play, so you go bunch right to bunch left, you know, um, you know, you, you would have a setting on there where your guys just basically flip with them, right? So, like, say um, I wanted to set up a, you know, a, a two-tiered type of uh, zone setting, right? Like a Mabel concept where you've got, you know, a uh, a flat underneath a, a deeper flat so that you can take away corner routes or whatever the case may be. Um, if you set that up on the right, um, on the same side of the, the bunch and they flip the bunch, your guys automatically go over there. Maybe it's, you know, um, you know how you have auto flip on, auto flip off. Maybe you do adjustments flip on and off, right? To where now you can run nickel coverages where the nickel player will always go ahead and um, basically follow the, the, the flip and, and be on the right side and, and keep his adjustments. That way you um, don't get, you know, what you wanted to set up on one side of the bunch always improves. Now, I would love that if you're able to toggle it off and off, you know, and basically, you know, it's one of those deals where if somebody's going from bunch to trips, maybe you don't want it there and you can just a, a simple reset, you know, will get the, 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 the nickel corner to go towards the side of the trips. But once you press reset, it goes to the initial, um, you know, play call. You're just trying to figure out ways that they can do it from a, a standpoint, from a coding standpoint, that we have that ability to basically, um, you know, get the best of both worlds where, you know, we're not scrambling and you know, trying to use those type of defenses. And the last one, which is going to be kind of controversial based upon competitive, is um, allowing for customizable audibles and having it safe. What I mean by that is say you're in, in real life football and you know you have a you have a pre-game plan, you know, you guys study these guys, they like to go from bunch to trips tight end, you know, and when they do that, instead of you know having to adjust every single player, say the middle linebacker is the one calling out, you know, um, his adjustments, he's gonna yell razor, razor, right? And that one word basically goes ahead and says, this is razor. And it could be a cover nine, it could be a cover three cloud to the trip side, whatever it may be. But, you know, you have that ability to where you can set it up to where, um, you know, it's already done for you. I'm not talking about just shells. I'm talking about what your adjustments are as well. Saying razor means that the nickel cornerback is now going to be manned up on the tight end and you're going to be doing, you know, a, um, a cover three cloud towards the bunch side and, um, you know, whatever the case may be. It's something set that you have, you know, a certain amount of these that you're allowed to have. You know, maybe say there's four audibles, you know, that you're able to do, or even if it's just, you know, a couple, whatever, whatever the, the limitations are, you have that ability to set something to where when somebody does that, you can go ahead and kick it in, right? Um, who knows? It might be something that you can do every play, or you can do it to where it's only when, you know, it only kicks in when somebody does a, a, a shift in formation or a flip, then you have that ability to it. I, I don't know what the most competitive way that what people would say um, in order to make sure that you know it's only done in the right uses or just have it all the time but I do think that is a possibility that can change this because um, we do have a problem we have a problem that you know right now it's not about X's and O's it's about who can flip it who can call audibles who can do quick hikes who can use um, you know the easiest plays in the game that can go after just your inability to change your um, your defense on the fly because the offense is always ahead. You know, a lot of people are going to say that's that's football. Um, it is, but it isn't, right? Um, you know, changing formations. There's a lot of reasons why you do that, right? You want to get tells if it's man or zone. You want to be able to get people to have confusion, all that type of stuff. But if you're in a situation to where um, the defense has the ability to make calls and set a defense at the sound of one word, we should be able to have that same type of capability and Madden, in my opinion, to make sure it's back to what it should be. It's about making the game out there about execution and, you know, the ability to, you know, uh, attack and, and, and scheme, not about, you know, basically uh, taking advantage of what the, um, just basically the, the speed of the offense can play compared to the deep. So that is what, um, you know, this uh, game plan change. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. So another gameplay change that I'd like to see done in Madden 25 has to do with RPOs. Now this is going to be probably a little bit different than other people. A lot of people feel like that there should be a, a, a total change of logic in them. I don't believe that's the case. Honestly, I believe that RPOs are actually done pretty decently in this game, except for one major factor. Okay. 
Now, that one major factor is that the read key on RPO reads gets overrided from when you want to put that player on man coverage, okay? What that means is basically when you have a read option, um, whether it's an RPO with it, it's a read uh, bubble or a read flat wheel or a read flat, whatever the case may be. When you go ahead and do adjustments on defense, we talk about this in a video that if you guys haven't seen before, I'll link it in the description. It talks about what you're doing wrong in order to make sure that you are changing the way that the RPOs play. It's really simple. You know, in order to be able to have a player um, that is going to read whether the quarterback or the running back is their responsibility, they have to be outside of the tackles, right? If they're inside the line, you pinch your line, they are no longer able to defend the run by the running back or the quarterback. So when you do these adjustments, it changes where the read key goes. And if the read key goes to the uh, nickel corner, he is no longer going to play the bubble, right? He's only going to play either the running back or the quarterback. I propose that if you go ahead and say, I want that nickel cornerback to play the bubble and I man him up, then at that point, his job at that point is going to basically be um, someone that will override what the read key says and he plays that play. That's going to give up the ability to run with your quarterback. That's going to give up the ability to run with your running back, basically, if you're pinching the line. But what that does is it says this is the defense you've chosen to run and you're, you're, you're choosing which option you want to give up, right? Where in the game right now, the game chooses to you, no matter what, we're not going to let you do anything with that nickel corner if he's the read key and he's coming after the quarterback and the running back. Where maybe I I can do that with my user. I can come around and loop around with my user to stop the run. I want him to play that player. So that's where I feel the changes need to happen, right? Not so much a complete overhaul. RPOs are part of the NFL. It's part of the game. It's part of offense. It makes you stress on the play. Do I like the fact that they put them in bunch and made these super type of, um, you know, playbooks and they're customizable like the Jets and the Eagles and all that? No, I hate that. I feel like that's the worst decision that was made with these playbooks is that we went away from trying to make bunch as good, you know, and what everybody uses and whatnot. And the two most popular, you know, formations out there, you know, whether what, whatever bunch you want to, you know, label, whether it's, you know, the bench halfback strong, the bunch strong offset um, and trips tight end, you're basically got these in there as part of strategies that you have to worry about in order to play defense. Are they stoppable? A hundred percent. These can be stopped with a lot of different ways, but in order to stop them, you are giving up the opportunity to stop a lot of the most powerful plays in the game. And that's why they are what they are and why people are frustrated because sometimes you have to play a certain way to stop the RPO, which opens up other things, but you have to do it in a way that's limiting to you because of the way the game is coded. To me, man coverage should, should override everything. If you want the guy to play man coverage, doesn't matter if he's the read key, he needs to be able to play that player. And then you deal with the consequences that way. Uh, and that's something that I would like to see change. Not so much take RPOs out of the game, but more so make sure that uh, we have that capability of um, not getting sucked into the play because of the way that we adjust our defense in that regard. Now, I would also like to say in that same sentence, let's get rid of RPOs a bunch. I think that's just something that, you know, um, we, we, we had our opportunity here and saw that it just does not do well for a a gameplay of uh, balance. I feel like, you know, um, it, it makes the game very, very, very um, habitual that you go and you're gonna play the same thing over and over again because the way that it's it's so demanding and we don't have, you know, that ability to, you know, um, stop things the way that they should be, the way that the game is coded right now. Now, if those things get corrected, then all is all, you know, play the game. But I think that, you know, um, the fact that uh, we made these playbooks the way they we did, added some of this stuff to those and made those super, super formations um, definitely um, makes the game a lot less enjoyable throughout the year from a experience standpoint. I'm not saying that it can't be stopped. I'm saying all that. But when you play the same thing over and over and over again, it, it gets boring. And I think that's what, um, you know, that decision to put it in bunch did. Um, and I think that's something that should definitely be taken out um, or tweaked or whatever the case might be uh, for next year um, in order for the, 
the, uh, the enjoyment of the game. So the next gameplay fix I'd like to see done is going to be something I can talk all day on, but we're going to have to try to minimize it because I'm obviously going to have a pretty long video as it is. That's just coverages, right? Um, coverage in this game hasn't been the same since we went to the new uh, next-gen consoles. Um, obviously, the movement's a lot tougher. You're going to see that um, in a lot of ways, it's more realistic. But in a lot of ways, it's a lot more offensive. And because of that, we need to look into what can we do to balance the game a little bit more. Now, the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to coverage is abilities itself that uh, basically coincide and really play a big factor in um, whether or not defense is good or not at different parts of the year. You start in the beginning of the year, a lot of times we don't have pick artists in Mutt, we don't have it in Regs, and the game plays different. And the reason for that is just that people are, you know, willing to throw it into double coverage to triple coverage because, to be honest, you just don't pay for your mistakes. You don't pay for bad reads, you might as well throw it, you have a higher percentage of coming down with it than they do as a DB. And it's just one of those deals to where it just plays like a different game. So I propose that pick artist needs to be something that isn't tied to catching the ball when it comes to every DB in traffic, I feel like that if we can make that as part of the, the rating system and, and once they get to a certain rating or in general, that it comes more natural, that will help the balance of the game. Make pick artists more about spectacular animations and diving catches and basically, you know, you're able to, you know, make a little bit more opportunity of, of maybe catching, you know, picks from a different, you know, radius of, of, you know, wingspan or whatever the case may be, you can make it that where it's it's better than if you don't have it. But I don't think that it should replace the ability to catch the ball in traffic because we have a game that's so offensive that, um, you know, nobody would be upset that they threw it into triple uh, coverage and somebody comes down with the interception. They know better. But, um, you know, not having the ability to catch those because you have pick artists really affects that early in the year. Now, Knockouts is the second thing, right? Knockouts is something that as the year goes on and as more people get more knockouts and they basically um, go throughout the field, you know, defense becomes, you know, much, much more viable because, you know, the way that knockouts are basically, um, you know, programmed in the game. And this is something that I'd really like to see changed. I feel that knockouts is something that needs to be only rewarded when you get knocked, when you basically hit a player when you're in the proper leverage to knock the ball out. Okay, what does that mean? If I throw a streak or a post route and I got two and a half to three yard separation, I catch the ball in stride and somebody basically touches me from behind, sneezes on me and the ball pops out because he made physical contact with me, that's just not gonna pass the eye test. That should never be part. He didn't hit him in a spot that's gonna jar that ball loose, right? Now on the flip end, if you throw on a slant, an in route, or basically just any route where somebody can basically hit you in the front of your body, then kind of think it like a hit stick, right? You're not gonna get a hit stick in the back, right? You're, you're gonna get a hit stick in the front or in the side or whatever the case may be. And if you hit somebody in that, 100% they should be knocked out, right? This is gonna help with understanding, you know, um, you know, what what could it could be used for what it can't you know on drag routes somebody pushes you from behind after you've got it you, you caught the ball took two steps and you get pushed and it can, you know basically the ball comes out that's just way too overpowered for what it is right same thing it happens you know on the sidelines or um you know in, in those regards and i really think that we need to look into that um to change that for the betterment of being able to have things more realistic now in my opinion there could be some give and take on this right if you're taking away what KOs are when it comes to that defense would be really 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 hard in this game when you combined it with any type of you know passing abilities you know like your set fit lead your velocity your, your, your pass lead, lead gunslinger anything that makes the ball get to the receiver quicker right well I propose that you take the mid zone KOs the deep you know zone KOs O's, you know um and, and whatnot and instead of allowing the KOs to basically um, the knockout part, you know, go ahead and run supreme, I would rather you get a bump to the reaction of those players when their eyes are facing the quarterback and um, allowing for that to be the answer when it comes to making coverage tighter, right? You know, if you're in a spot where somebody can break on the ball a lot quicker and yet you still don't get the bailouts on the KOs, I think that would make for a better game. Just, that's just my personal opinion on it. I feel like, you know, we can't take away KOs in the way right now because it's kind of a necessary evil in this game. But 
it doesn't mean that it, it, it does, can't be done in a different way, right? If a safety is looking at a player coming across the middle, they're going to be able to break on the ball a lot quicker because they have, you know, let's say deep in KO and um, they're still going to be able to hit that player if they hit them in a spot that, you know, uh, basically the contact is going to be able to jar the ball loose, right? Now, I don't believe there should be ever any KOs in, the, in, in their back unless they're stationary. Right, um, you know, if you're in a curl route or you're sitting there hitting a spot route, and you know a linebacker or a safety comes and hits you in the back and times the ball as you catch it, 100%. Right, you were stationary, your your feet were planted. You know, if you're in motion on a drag, a slant, a a post or um, anything there, you know that, or even a streak, even, and you've got your guy man beat and somebody touches you from behind, you know, that should not jar the ball loose you know, um, from the way that it does now. I think it's just one of those things that's such a bailout, such a frustrating thing in the game that I think that we need to get rid of that and just up the reaction time as a, um, a solution to basically give the defense a little bit more. Just my opinion on it, but I think that we need to get something closer to that because the way that we play the game right now, it's just frustrating, you know, especially at the end of the year when you got mid KOs everywhere and, you know, you throw a seam route and the, the, the corner that's playing the sidelines you know, basically, um, you know, can break to the inside and touch the ball, the guy in his back when, when it's clearly, you know, pass led to the inside and that ball is going to get charred loose just because he touches him. I just think those are things that we could definitely um, get a better balance on. So now let's talk about coverage with the zones themselves and kind of what needs to be tweaked a little bit in order to make sure that um, we get a little bit more coverage on the field, really. The first thing, you know, everybody um, has had this pain is cloud flats, right? Um, the, the problem with cloud flats is that when you press them, you have them on zone drops, they're basically not going to get any depth on their back pedal and they're literally just useless out there unless you kind of want them as sort of like a hard flat, right? Um, it really gives the inability to disguise when you're pressing because, you know, people will know that they're in a, a third or a, a quarter or man coverage when you have somebody pressed and you really don't have to worry about that cornerback on the outside really getting any intermediate depth, right? Um, he's he's got a backpedal and he's, you know, if you have a streak, the guy's going to go deep with him, right? Um, when you're in a press alignment and, and that's something that needs to kind of, um, you know, change so that we can kind of disguise a little bit, you know, when people are, are playing a lot of base uh, man or basically have to back the player off just to make sure that their cloud flat plays a certain uh, distance um, You know that that kind of changes you, what you can do from baiting people into certain you know types of um, You know routes that you want to take away. So that's the first thing second thing Let's just talk about zone drops in general your 5 10s 15 20s whether they're blues or purples or whatnot and basically their inability to really have too much intelligence out there once you put them in zone drops. A lot of times what they're gonna do is they're gonna go, we've instructed them to drop to a certain spot and they're gonna drop to that spot, that blade of grass, guard that blade of grass until the ball's thrown. Which in a lot of parts, that's kind of what we asked for because it was really hard to cover certain parts of the field we wanted them to do that. I'm proposing that we just get a little bit more intelligence in them when it comes to understanding how many threats are in their area and basically when there's no threats within a certain radius of them that they can go ahead and, and basically um, understand that they can get off that spot a little bit and cover what is the um, the threat that is closest to them regardless if it's five yards shorter, five yards deeper, in that case. I'll kind of give you an example, right? If you're running, let's just say, a... Um, a corner route that's going to basically clear you know a, a 30 yard flat and you know you're on the wide side of the field and you got a streak and whatnot and you know you get to the point where there's absolutely not one threat on the field that is going underneath that corner route and the only player on the whole right side of the field let's say is just a streak that basically is way ahead of the uh, of the corner and then the corner route and you look at the whole rights of the field and your guy is asked to play at 25 yards and this guy is going to clear him by five yards. But instead of that guy, you know, going back and saying, this is obviously a threat that, that should be something that I go ahead and recognize that even though it's outside of my zone drop, that I can go play it. I'm going to set this play to grass because that's what they told me to do. Now, 
To me, in that situation, I think that the guy should have a little bit more wherewithal to understand that there is absolutely no threats on the field other than the two routes and one's way past me and one's gonna be there. That guy should go ahead and get more depth, right? Whereas if there was a player that, you know, same situation, but now there is a drag that's coming underneath them. Now you're going to calculate it and say, no, there's a second player um, on my side of the field and I'm only going to play what I was instructed to play. Right. And I think that's where the difference would be if we get them a little bit more, you know, cognizant of when to, to drop back and when not to drop back, depending on how many threats that are on my side of the field. I think would go a long way, right? Um, it would give that opportunity for us to basically allow our players to to not just watch people go above them for no reason, just because we instructed them, you know, to make their first area of responsibility 25 yards. I guess that's the best way I could put it, right? I don't want you just to be at 25 yards. I want you to be your first area at 25 yards, play your 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 position there, and then from that spot. Let's look at the situation and play the closest player to you if there's nobody around you, right? I want them to be a little bit more um, understanding of, you know, um, the presence of, of threats in their area of responsibility and play them when it's appropriate and then hold your position when it's not. And I think that's something that if we can build that type of logic in, I think we could cover a lot more field. Next thing is, is is literally what we're able to do, right? Um, you all know that, you know, we put a third safety on the field. We're able to kind of do outside thirds from our safeties. That should just be built into every every hot route, right? Why do we have to change our, our, our line just to make sure that, um, you know, our lineup to have a third safety in the field to be able to do that or change our package, whatever the case may be? That should be built in. I think that's something that we got to the point, in the sh uh, you know, in the game that um, having that type of coverage is something that's needed when it comes to being able to cover the sidelines we, we could we found you know numerous ways in cover two to have that whole shot and in order to make sure that we know that we want our guys not to be you know able to hit that whole shot as often we put them in the outside third i think that just should be a standard um type of hot route that you're able to do um you know adjustment whatever you want to do it's not really a hot route it's you know adjustment on defense in order to um do that so i think that should be another thing that's just naturally in the game that needs to be addressed in the same thing the next thing we need to talk about when it comes to coverage is, is match coverage um i'm talking not the the setting match i'm talking about your cover four matches like quarters and palms cover six cover nine um your soft squats um, to really work in the way that they were intended. This year we had a little bit of a problem with their cover three seam, which is their cover three match, and um, the players basically breaking down on um, you know players that are at the line of scrimmage rather than staying with you know, vertical routes, and that really hurt the way that you can play you know certain types of you know coverages and the way that people flip and whatnot. If you wanted to start off in a uh, cover three seam and they, they go from one style um, alignment to another, now you're trying to get out of it and it was just a little bit of a, a a tougher thing just because it didn't work when i say as intended as it had in the past and i think that cleaning that up is going to have to go a long way i also think that in the same topic there needs to be something that we can have when it comes to uh defending four by one formations you know when it came to um the way that this game is programmed once you put the running back on the same side as a three wide receiver side you literally you know kind of get the match to not um, go and, and have the same principles i love to have some calls in there that give you the ability to go ahead and um, erase one of those uh, threats and then you know play as normal right if it's as simple as you know um, having a additional player or a linebacker that takes out the um, one threat and then they play the other three the same way with a box check or just in general just have the opportunity to make sure that we are um you know, got the tools to, to, to uh, handle what is getting put in the game from an offensive standpoint in that way. And the last point I'm making coverage is something I already talked about with RPOs earlier in the video, but I, I do want to see that if we had the tools to also do a play the receiver option, right? An option you've got, you know, basically you got your conservative that's got the, the, the quarterback or the running back. But if we had an extra one that, you know, basically say play the receiver, um, that would allow for our zones to be still on the field and we wouldn't have to man up 
um, that um, that slot receiver that's doing the bubble where the case is every single time, right? Um, if we say, you know what, we want our guy to, to play the receiver and, and not be somebody that wants to play the, um, the running back uh, quarterback, we can keep him in a zone and allow him to do his thing. And we're going to give up the option that is keep the ball in and let the quarterback go. And I think that's something that, um, you know, anything and we have the ability to, to depict what we want because a lot of times if somebody's going to keep the quarterback you know i mentioned this where you can use that right you can say you know what i'm going to go running back to quarterback with my user and i just want my player to play the receiver i think if we had to play the receiver option as a coverage assignment when it comes to option I think that would be something that would go ahead and uh, go a long way to stopping RPOs. And I think that's something that uh, we greatly need. Um, just not the logic, just the ability to get our players to play who we want them to play, I think is the big key when it comes to stopping RPOs in next year's game. And hopefully that's that's part of it. So the last gameplay change I'd like to talk about is abilities in general. And this is a topic we can do several different videos on, to be honest with you. I can talk about, you know, top five abilities I think that need to be tweaked, top five abilities I think need to be removed altogether, you know, things that I don't want to see in the game at all when it comes to the way that, you know, it is utilized in MUT. But I will go and just talk about the highlights first and how um, some of these abilities, in my opinion, um, can overall change the, the way that the game is played, right? So... First thing about abilities, right? Um, let's talk about the ones that were a little bit too overpowered in Madden 24. Um, starting off with Jukebox. I feel like Jukebox was something that was incredibly, incredibly good this year. Maybe way too um, you know, drastic in the way that it cut and you could go back and forth with it. Um, was it fun? Yeah, it was fun. It was something that you know definitely gave people the ability to catch the ball after and get a lot of yards. But all in all, if we're all gonna be honest, it definitely could use a little bit more of a opportunity to where um, we can go ahead and, and shorten its ability to um, you know, uh, the work as effectively as it did. Uh, KOs we talked about in the last one, obviously something I'd like to see tweaked when it comes to how and when they go off and the ability to basically go ahead and um, you know, make the game a little bit more realistic. Uh, we talked about velocity abilities in the last one. I feel like Sephi Lead, Pass Lead Elite need to be something that um, gets toned down. Um, needs to be something that, um, you know, it needs to be something that goes in conjunction with the, the coverage changes. If coverage changes don't change, then I think the velocity abilities need to either be toned down or, you know, basically removed and basically just be built into each quarterback's arm strength and whatnot. Um, and that would also, you know, tie with the abilities for, you know, your coverages to be tied to their zones and the way they react. But if we're doing something to where, um, you know, these these abilities um, are, are, are honestly causing more of the need for knockouts. And I think that's something that we need to, to address uh, on one side or the other, either improve coverage and keep the velocities the same or um, decrease the velocities and um, you know, basically uh, still improve the coverage a little bit on things that it's lacking, but they can kind of go hand in hand. Now, other abilities that I think that need to be changed, I personally think that roaming Deadeye, dashing Deadeye need to be removed from the game altogether. I think that these are, um, when it says, you know, perfect accuracy whatsoever, I think they went away uh, and they put in this game, which was nice, where if you backed up too far, you got inaccurate throws. But if you can, back up and you know as long as you got something on you throw across your body you know across the field you know 35 yards down the field on the run it's not football it just doesn't happen right like to me there needs to be um when you're on the run your accuracy goes down whether you can make it in the vicinity of that player that's fine well you know based upon the amount of distance on the throw depending on the speed of your player how far you're behind the line of scrimmage should all be factors Right now we have the ability to do blue passes. If you guys don't know what that is, we've talked about it on the YouTube channel before. It's basically your way of saying, I'm talented at the game, I can time my throw, and I can get myself a better opportunity to throw the ball on the run, and it's in the game built in. I think that's all you need when it comes to, if you are getting flushed out, 
the timing of your throw should depict accuracy with all those other factors and those abilities should be removed. In my opinion, run and gun as an X factor, I think it ruins the game, especially the second half of the year, due to the fact that one of the things that's really flawed in the game that we didn't even talk about is pursuit angles. You know, the ability to contain players, the pursuit angles, the way that, you know, your players are going to a certain spot and you can um, basically uh, manipulate the way that you take your path to make them take a different path. And until that gets fixed, the game is just going to be something that, um, to me, the ability to throw the ball on the run allows that style of play to happen. And that is what needs to be fixed. If you become skillful at, th at throwing blue passes on the run, then you know what? You should be rewarded with a nice throw. If you can't, then you should not be bailed out by uh, you know these type of um, you know uh, accuracy bailouts, in my opinion, for these players that run. And that's just what I think on that one is that. Other ones, threat detector, um, to me, uh, it goes in the same line of film study. Um, you know, if you're blitzing, being able to know who's blitzing on those downs, I think that's just too powerful of something. It just takes the, the, the ability out of the way. Same with Omaha in film study, right? One, you know, Omaha is earned. So it's something like, it's not my favorite thing in the world to know exactly what somebody's doing. Um, film study is a cause of somebody calling the same play over and over. So there is control there. Threat detector is a third down, fourth down thing, right? There's no control over it. You know, in third or fourth down, I can literally, if you're smart at the game, understand what formation they're in, understand their alignment, understand who they're blitzing, and really be able to dissect and know what's already going on in the play. And it's kind of like a, a free way to, you know, obviously be able to um, dial up, you know, stuff. And I think that's something that um, just, I don't know, I don't wanna say it doesn't belong in the game. I just think that there should be some sort of thing that you do from a offensive standpoint that allows it to trigger um, and, and turn it off. Not that it's on a third and fourth down, right? If you, th if you, I don't know, um, have a certain amount of completions in a row, it doesn't turn on, whatever it is, but there needs to be a deactivation. It can't just be present if you want to keep it in the game. I just think it's a little bit too powerful in that regard, right? Now, as far as other abilities that just this year, um, Colossus, honestly, guys, I mean, um, Unstoppable, um, angry runs. These things make the game so arcade. Um, I understand there's a place, there's an opportunity for it. I think one of the things I'd love to see is two separate modes. You know, when it comes to people that want to play that way and just want to play football in more of an NFL blitz style of way, they've got a mode for that. Whether that's, you know, maybe all, all pro is, you know, you have um, all these X factors that are pre-lits and all these things that, you know, um, go on unearned. And then maybe your all Madden mode isn't that way. Um, but it needs to be a change in the game that allows for a little bit more of enjoyment for people who don't want that uh, as the game goes on in Mutt. I understand Mutt is a, um, a ultimate mode build team building. It has nothing to do with gameplay, right? Gameplay is something that has been added to this mode. It's not about players anymore and speed and 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 card collecting. It's it's. I know people want to talk about it's not a sim game mode. The cards and stuff, yeah, you're, you're putting a collection in your in your teams aren't exactly sim, but the gameplay doesn't have to not be just because of the way it is. And if that's the direction that EA wants to go, that's fine. Just give us a second mode that, that those don't start. I mean, the way that this game was this year, um, you know, one of the things that I was not a fan of is the hit sticks weren't powerful at all this year. You could hardly get anything and the strip fumbles were very, 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 um, you know, the better way to go. But it was nice to see that Avalanche actually started to get more hit sticks, but those should never be lit all game. They should never be lit to start. These things should all be earned. I mean, and I understand that, you know, we're at a point in the game, you know, especially at the end of the game where it's a free for all and we just want to, you know, go out there. But um, let's have separate modes. Let's have it to where it's different. 
So those are my thoughts right now, guys. Um, there's a whole bunch of things I could have gone a lot further in. Obviously, I didn't want to get as long as I did on this. Hopefully, you guys were able to take my advice in the beginning and you know play a game, listen to me, practice, or do some solos, or you know just on a long car drive because this was going to be a long one, um, and that you didn't just sit there at the, and, and watch this the entire time. But I do appreciate you all. It was something I just wanted to kind of get out there, and I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this. What do you agree with? What don't you agree with? Um, what do you feel like um, are better solutions? Um, what are solutions that um, users are saying, you know, that just doesn't work? Um, and like I said, I didn't propose these solutions as things that I agree with. I just said that these are some solutions out there that could be done um, in order to get us a little bit closer. So love to hear your thoughts and we'll catch you on the next video, guys. Appreciate you.